Yo, so it's really cool to see in this last episode, part one, how we got into the aspect of the Atalans, the Kutans. Kind of got a biblical aspect of what he's trying to say and see, but we're just going to continue it back up. So let's get to it. So now we have the Alagani Mountains were called Loka, Loka. The Alagani Mountains were called Loka, Loka. And beyond them, the country was called the Great White Land, the Mahaswita Bumi of Hindi. And it became the seat of a great empire, or the Western Atlantic Empire. This included, of course, Kentucky, but extended from Lake Ontario in the north to the Mississippi. The Atlantic shore is called Lokuta or La Chattakuta were not settled. Owing to their arid soil lately emerged from the sea, this western empire may be called the Atalan Empire. May, but possibly showing strong indications, right? So this is pretty cool because we have the Atalan being included into um, the Mahaswita Bumi of Hindi. Seat of a great empire, <clears throat> extending, connected across the plain. So we got this third period here to the revolution of Peleg. Uh oh, okay, so let's see what's going down. The country watered by the Ohio and its branches was the center of the Atalan Empire, and its metropolis stood somewhere on the Ohio. It was divided in several provinces and ruled by a powerful monarch of the Atlas family. The who? Atlas family. On where? The Ohio Valley. Huh? The Atlantic monarchs of Africa, Europe, Atlantia, and Atala often contended for supremacy, and the Atalan empires obtained it once. <clears throat> Their dominion extended from Atala to Syria. They were repulsed in Greece and Egypt. The African emperors were acknowledged generally as lords paramount, but they resided in Europe as often as in Africa and had to contend against the Titans, a branch of their family reigning in the Alps. There were successfully many Atlantic emperors and monarchs bearing the names Ian, uh-oh, Prete Ian, <laughs> Atlas, Akmon, Oran, Ilan, Silvan, Sanu, or Sator, Japhet, or Yudish, Titan, Neptune, or Naftur, Plut, Evenor, Oanes, Derseto, Triton, Mut, Lucip, Rahu, etc., and many continents who were often at war with the monarchs of Egypt, Ethiopia, Scythia, Iran, and Bharata, or Hindustan. <laughs> Bharat. And intercourse was kept up more or less regularly between all the primitive nations and empires from the Ganges to the Mississippi. Now, Krishna, or Hercules, and Ramachandra, two heroes of India, visited Atala and the court of the Western monarchs, which is called one of the heavens on earth by the holy books of the East. Do you hear that? Krishna, or Hercules, and Ramachandra, two heroes of India visited Atala and the court of the Western Monarchs, which is called one of the heavens on earth by the holy books of the East. The Atalans were civilized like the Atlantes, lived in towns, built houses of wood, clay, and rough stones. They worshipped the sun and moon as emblems of the deity and built them circular temples. They talking about us, y'all. They talking about us Americans, man. That we praised and worshipped the sun and the moon, an understanding that nature is the supreme of all. Like, they took that away from us when they brought upon these religions to us and persecuted us for believing the way that we believe, you know? And that's just wild because the land speaks to you. Nature speaks to you. Once you tap into the sauce, you can feel it. It's an energy, it's a source, it's an intelligence, it's a wisdom that flows throughout. I mean, the religions speak of it, but when they, when you see it the way that you see it or feel it and recognize it in your way, then they, you know, they don't want to accept you just as a <laughs> understanding. So, 
we keep going. They worshiped the sun and moon as emblems of the deity and built them circular temples. We knew geometry, architecture, astronomy, glyphic signs or writing, the use of metals, agriculture, etc. We had public games and festivals, etc. Our food did consist of flesh, fish, fruits, roots, and corn, which we apparently, from his understanding, brought from the east. But I, that's, you got Dodge the Hijack. Where does all of the original major food groups come from? We've already spoken about this in our part one of the America's The True World series. Like, 80% plus of all the basic major foods come from the Americas, y'all. Like, wake up. At the time of their highest prosperity, a dreadful convulsion of nature happened in the Atlantic Ocean and other parts of the world, which is recorded in the oldest annals of many nations like the Hebrew, the Hindus, the Chinese, the Mexicans, Greeks, Egyptians, and etc. Do you understand? Our land had a major occurrence, but this happens all across our plane of existence. It appears to have been occasioned by simultaneous eruptions of volcanoes and earthquakes which sunk, destroyed, or convulsed many islands and countries, and among others, the Atlantic land, of which the volcanic islands Azores, Madeira, Canary, and Cap Third are the remains. So you gotta understand, like, yo, our lands got really messed up. I mean, look at Yellowstone, y'all. It's the biggest super volcano in the world. It's right here on our land. Like, watch out now. Now, in America, the Atalan lands were severed. The Carib Islands formed the Atlantic shores inundated by awful tides, and many countries sank or sunk and were altered. This cataclysm is the division of the earth under Peleg. It don't relate to over there. It relates to over here, y'all. The flood of Ojijes, or Ogug, the Sanskrit convulsion of the White Sea or Atlantic Ocean. Okay? That is here, y'all. Peleg is America. The terror occasioned by this phenomenon interrupted the intercourse between Europe and America. That's why Europe is included so closely, y'all. The Eastern Atlantes thought that the whole American continent had sunk, like the Atlantic and many Antillan islands, and the Atlantes of the interior of America became insulated and separated from the Atlantic Empire. So here we got some good, some good feed, some good drop. That's some good information to understand. Now we're coming into the fourth period to the Istakan invasion under his understanding and theory. Now the Atalans of North America became now divided in many states and nations, such as okay, the Apalans or the Tlapalans scattered from Florida to Virginia. Okay? From Florida to Virginia. The Timalans from Texas to Guatemala. Okay? So we got the Timalans from Texas to Guatemala. The Pacons, Pacons, or Lactons, Lacons from the Allegheny to Panama, okay? These divided again into Golocas, Conois, Nanticoes, Zolu, Zolucans, Lomachas, Popolocas, Wokons, and Poco Pocochians, Poconchians, the Gorons from Missouri to Mexico, the Talegans in Kentucky, Illinois, Ohio, Virginia, etc., while the Gutons of North America became also independent and formed many nations such as the Ayacutans of Haiti, etc., the Lachacutans of Cuba, and the Alachuans of Florida, the Yucatans of Mexico, in the Yukoyans of Bahama. The Arohuans of many islands and South America. The Tunicas of Louisiana. The Pinacajas. The 
te pena cas en ton na cas of Anahuac, the Panucans of Texas, and the Danutans of Tennessee, the Catabans of Carolina and Florida, the Cousins, the Cousandans or Cuisedans of Tennessee and Alabama, the Cousins, <laughs> what? The Cousatans, <laughs> y'all watch out, major drop. <laughs> It really relates, man. So, all those nations were often contending for supremacy, except the islanders, who became happy, peaceful nations, whence the West Indies were called the Fortunate Islands, when discovered again. It appears that the Telagans of the Ohio and the Apalans south of them were two of the most powerful empires of that period. The Apalans had many provinces or tribes, such as the Apala Apalachis, the Apalehin, the Tlapan, Alatamaha, Ichiti, Opalusas, etc., and were often at war with the Talegans. These Talegans were formed, which we found named Talegawes or Aleganes afterwards, okay, had dominion over a large extent of our country, okay. So here we have a major breakdown, which we have to understand. It appears that the Talegans of the Ohio and the Apalans south of them were two of the most powerful empires of that period. This is way back, y'all. So when we talk about uh, the Adena Mounds and all that, we talk about the Apalans and the Talegans of the Ohio. These are the mound builders. These are the ancient, ancient people of our land, y'all. So the Apalans had many provinces or tribes such as the Apalachis, okay, the Apelehen, the Tlapan, the Alatamaha, the Ichiti, and the Opalusas, etc. And were often at war with the Talegans. Now the Talegans, which we found named the Talegawes or Aleganes afterwards, okay? So the Talegawes, the Talegawes, Alagani, Alegawe, had dominion over a large extent of the country. These are our mound builders, okay? These are the deep roots of the mound builders and where we need to be investigating and how they relate to the rest of the world. There, several provinces were situated in the most fertile regions, such as Kentucky, Ohio, in the Kenhawe Valley, the Illinois the banks of Lake Erie and Ontario. After some centuries, America was visited again by the nations of the West Europe and Africa, but neither frequently nor in numbers. Okay? Now this is after we talk about Peleg, the flood of Peleg. A casual intercourse was restored between the two continents after the flood of Peleg. The Azores were revisited as well as Madeira, but not people owing to their active volcanoes, but the Canary or the Hesperides islands were. From thence these navigators went to Serenay or St. Jago, and in 18 days to the Carib Islands. About this time the Carib or the Galibis, 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 must have come to South America. They appear of Cantabrian origin. The, <clears throat> the great nation of Guarani which extended all over Guiana, Brazil, and Paraguay, was of Daran origin and previous arrival. Who? The Daran origin, to his understanding, okay? Now, when the Arctutans, or Ar Ar Arcutans, when the Ar when the Arcut when the Arcutans or the Farmarians, Farmarians of Ireland were expelled by the Danans a tribe of Pallas or Gauls. After many revolutions in the island, they fled to Ayacuta or western island of Haiti and became probably the Aruhuac nation. Interesting, right? See how we got some uh, understanding and correlation there, okay? Now, till then, the inhabitants of America had come from the east. But now a great <clears throat> dodge the hijack. But we're we're gonna we're gonna rock with what he's saying. We're gonna 
understand what what research has got him to where he's at now but now a great invasion took place from the west or from asia perhaps these asiatic nations had crossed the ocean before the pelagan or agugan catastrophe okay you hearing that before perhaps the asiatic nations had crossed the ocean before the pelagon or ugugan catastrophe they don't know they are traced to the northwest coast of america and gradually came in contact with the atalans and kutans on the missouri and in anuhawak i shall call them istakan from their ancestor istak now, the fifth period, or the decline and fall of the Atalans. Now, the wars which happened in consequence of the Istakan invasions had the effect to annihilate some nations and scatter many others, while several were subdued and incorporated with their conquerors. Kentucky was conquered by the Olmecas, or Olmecas, Olmec. Kentucky was conquered by the Ol. Mechas. That is the old mechs, y'all. You see how they did us? Old mechas. When we searching up old mechs, you need to be searching up old mechas. Okay? Then we have the huasiotos. Okay? Huasiotos. Okay? And the tai. Daensas. Daensas. The three is the con nations okay so when we going back truly going back not with the new hijack of the adena the adena mounds and all these other you know names that they've given to the people and the originals okay these are the originals okay so we need to be looking at the old mechas the huasiotos and the dain dainsas the three istakan nations now, after the successive rule of these nations on the Ohio, the Siberian nations, or the Oguzians, okay, the Oguzians tribes began to appear and wage war on the Istakans and the Atalans, which they drove away to the south, okay? You see how far back we're going now, as far as understanding what the nation went through, okay? They drove them south. Now, the last remains of the former Atalans and Kutans, which can be traced to have escaped these conflicts and were still existing towards 1500, were the following. The Wakans, Wakanda, Wakans, and Carolina. The Homoloas, the Malikas, the Appalachians, and others in Georgia and Florida. The Kamnois of Virginia and the Nanticos of Maryland the Catabas of Carolina, the Cahuitas and Calusas of Alabama, the Tunicas of Louisiana, the Carans, the Croas or Escoros of the Missouri, Arkansas, Carolina, California and Mexico, besides many nations of Anahuac, etc. Now, before the Christian era, a casual intercourse was kept up between the two continents. The Phoenicians and the Gadesiums traded to America. Okay, again, where the Phoenicians come from? The Pelasgians, okay, we know this. This continent was known to the maritime nations of West Europe and Northwest Africa. The Numidians, the very dark-skinned Numidians, went there 2,000 years ago as well as the Celts or Celts. And we know that the Totecans were the settlers of Africa, like, or uh, at least Egypt. Okay? Now, they frequented Paria and Haiti principally. The Etruscans, a powerful nation of Italy who settled there from the Rhetian Alps about 3,000 years ago, according to his chronology, okay, went to America and wanted to send colonies there, but were prevented by the Carthaginians, okay? Now, this intercourse gradually declined owing to the numerous shipwrecks and warlike habits of the Caribs, Istakans, and Oguzians, till the knowledge of America became almost lost or clouded in fables and legends. 
Now you see here, we ain't speaking about no fables or legends. Okay, this is about what really went down. We not renaming tribes of people that found like we getting down to the true names and understanding of what really happened. Now, during the decline of the Atalan, some fled to Anahuac in South America, where they founded new empires or civilized many nations. Exactly what we've been saying, y'all. Exactly what I've been saying. The people who came here and invaded America are not the creators of the mounds. They were warlike people who waged wars against our peaceful like people and pushed us down after we had been there for several thousands upon thousands of countless years. I mean, look at how many mounds we truly have, y'all. Okay, we got pushed down to the Yucatan further and further south and created larger and greater things. But to look to the originators, we must come back up to the Ohio's valleys. The predecessors of everything south. And we can see that clearly as we have trade and intercourse of many different nations coming to the Yucatan Peninsula. It's all there being settled. So we have many nations such as the Cholulans of Anahuac and the Muisias, the Porui. Paruyas, the Colois, the Tiahuanacos, and the Cojois, Cojois of South America, who ascribed their ancient civilization to white and bearded strangers. Thus, the ancient arts and sciences of North America were transferred to the South, and the greatest splendor of the Atalans and the Cutans they had built above 1,000 towns on the waters of the Ohio. Do you hear that? Of which nearly 200 were in Kentucky, and the remains of above 100 are seen to this day. Do you understand? As we go into the mound builders deeper and deeper, what is going on? The population must have been as great as the actual one, and Kentucky must have been have had half a million inhabitants at least. The monuments of these early nations are easily distinguished from the subsequent Istakan monuments by a greater antiquity. Their circular, elliptical, and conical shapes. We're speaking of the mounds, our temples, our pyramids, our structures of such a great time period that we've gone through the flood of Peleg and possibly even the Nakian flood. Do you understand how far back we this land truly goes in relation to its antiquity of people upon this nation? That's why he's not getting specific with dates, y'all. Chapter 3. The History of the Istakans. Let's dive into it. Let's get to it, baby. So the annals of the numerous nations who claim this origin may be divided into five periods of time. From the Istakan Empire of Asia to the Istakan settlements in America and Kentucky, including many centuries. From the invasion of Kentucky to the foundation of the Natchez Empire, including about 10 centuries. From the Natchez Empire to the Oghusian invasion, including about 5 centuries. From the Oghusian invasion to the expulsion of the Natchez from Kentucky, including about 5 centuries. From the Natchez expulsion to the present time, including the Chickasa and the Cherokee dominions in Kentucky, about 10 centuries. Diving into that first period to the invasion of Kentucky. Soon after the formation of the great Asiatic empires of Iran, Ayodhya. Vitora, China, etc. Another was founded near the Caspian Sea on the mountains of Kaf or the Caucasus, the Caucasus, and Vipula or Bactria, which was successfully called Astula or Strong Land, Ast Aztlan, Tula, Talan, Turan, etc. Okay, <laughs> watch out. The first monarch. Of it was Istak Mixcoltl, strong head snake. He had six sons who became the heads of as many nations they were. 
Exhua, or Kalhua, the father of the Kalhuans, Tenak, or Tenuk, ancestor of the Tenuks, Olmakal, or Olmakar, ancestor of the Olmakans, Ixkal, Zikalantkal, or Zikalhan, of the Zikalans, Mixtecal, or Mistecal, of the Tecas, Otolmet, Otolmet, ancestor of the Otomis. From these have sprung all the Istakan nations scattered all over North America and part of South America. Now this is what we need to be researching right here. Not all these new names they done gave us, man. Now, many other empires have begun to rise in the vicinity of Aslan, such as those of Bali, Scythia, Tibet, Oghuz, the Istakan, were driven eastwards north of China. But some fragments of the nation are still found in the Caucasus, etc., such as the Al Abians or Abasans, Altiset. Al Tiset Al Tiset Zex Kusha Zibs Kusha Zibs Chunsags Mojors, etc. The six Istaka nations being still pressed upon by their neighbors, the Ok. Okugzians, Moguls, etc., gradually retreated or sent colonies to Japan and the islands of the Pacific Ocean, having discovered America at the peninsula of Al Alaska during their navigations. The bulk of the nation came over and spread from Alaska to Anahuac, establishing many states in the west of America, such as Tula Amakemekan. Establishing many states in the west of America, such as Tula, Ameke Meka, Tehuayo, Nabayo, Tepantla, Hue Hue, and many others. After crossing the mountains, they discovered and followed the Missouri and Arkansas rivers, reaching thus the Mississippi and Kentucky. So, this is what he got going on in his first period as far as what he's understanding in relation to the research. And this is pretty cool to understand. What he's seeing as the Istakan nations being pressed and coming over to America because of all these names, right? Father of the Kulkans, Tanuk, answers to the Tanuks, the Olmecans, and, and how far back this is really going, okay? Now, let's see, where's we at? Um, many other nations. Okay, so we're in the second period now. So, to the foundation of the Natchez, the Olmecas, or the Holmes. Okay, or other name, the old Mecca's, or you can search up Holmes, Holmes, were the first Istakans who ventured to come to Kentucky, where they did not make a permanent settlement. Do you understand this? Now, from their research, this is what he's saying, y'all. What you think is real? What you think is really going on? You think there's not a possibility? You want to take this all the way account and just say it is not true at all? Are we taking away and dismissing everything here? Because you may not want to you want to be held to a certain belief? You know, this is this is kind of interesting to find out that the Olmecas, right? Or the Holomese were the first Istakans who ventured to come to Kentucky, where they did not make a permanent settlement. Let's keep going. They came in contact with the Talagans. So here we understand that the Talagans were already in America before the Olmecs and the Holomese. But do you understand that you could possibly be an Olmecas or a Holmes and not a Talagan? And not being able to subdue them, they left the country, invaded Tennessee, etc. The Wenaginas and the Westos of Carolina, as well as the Yamasis of Georgia, may be remains of these Olmecas. Okay, you understanding that? Okay, we got that understood. So the bulk of the nation went to Anahuac, okay, with the Z Zikalans, having made an alliance with them. 
the Zikalans were another Istakan nation who had come down to Arkansas, meeting on the Mississippi with powerful Atalans, such as the Karans and Talagans, etc. They joined the old Meccas in a confederacy against them. You see what's going on, y'all? Y'all hearing what's going on here in America? What's up? After partly settling in Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida, they were both compelled to go to Anahuac, which they reached from the northeast and were where they became powerful in time. The Otomis, okay? The Otomis were the most barbarous of the Istakans, being hunters rather than cultivators. They had spread gradually from the Mississippi, Missouri to Anahuac in the rear of the Zacalans under the names of Mazahuas or Mahas. Huashashas or Osages, okay? Osages, okay? You understand what's going on? The most barbarous, okay? Capajas or Arkansas, Otos or Huatoktas, Minoas or Missouri or Iowas or Dariotas or Natoeses, Huatanes, or Mandans, etc. They began to make war on the Talegans of Illinois, Ohio, and Kentucky, and the Atos appear to, to have become the Saitos of Ohio. The Huasiotos of East Kentucky and the Utinas of Florida. The Colhuans and the Nuchans came to last on the Arkansas and settled the kingdoms of Talan, Tula, Huehue, Copata, etc. in that region. The Atalans and Istakans were successfully at war or in peace, but the Istakans prevailed at last in West Kentucky when all the Istakans east of the Mississippi formed a confederacy against the Atalans. This was the beginning of the Natchez Dominion. During these struggles, many peaceful Atalans left the country and went to Anahuac Ayati, Anahualco, and South America, where they became legislators and rulers. Now, in the third period to the Okhusian invasion, the Natchez Empire or Confederacy of Istakan nations extended from the Ohio to Florida and from the Alleghenies to the Mississippi. West of it were the kingdoms of Capaja, Pacaja, and Copata, perhaps only one, also Istakan. This confederacy consisted of 500 towns and many tribes such as the Natchez, Dainas, Dainsas, Chetimichas, Movila, Yasus, or Hiasus, and many more. East of them were the Appalachian and Catawba confederacies, and north of the Talagans, who had retreated on the north side of the Ohio. The nations forming this empire or league were civilized and cultivators. They became polished by their intercourse with the Atalans and borrowed many customs from them. They worshipped the sun and fire, but did not build circular temples, erecting instead pyramids and high altars, generally of a square and angular form. Each tribe had a king, each town a governor, but the Natchez kings, who were called sons, had the supremacy over all. Agriculture and trade were well attended to. Many contentions and revolutions happened, but the Oghusian invasion was the most fatal. The Siberian nations, which had spread over the north of Asia, had the dissolution of the Oguzian Empire, having come to America across Bering Strait, sought milder climates by traveling south and coming in contact with the civilized but less warlike nations of interior origin, began to wage war over them and drive them gradually further south towards Florida and Anahuac. Now, in the fourth period to the expulsion of the Natchez from Kentucky, at the Okhusian invasion, the Dainkas, a Natchez tribe, occupied West Kentucky. The Huasiotos were the East Kentucky, and some Telegans still had the 
held the banks of the Ohio, etc. The Cherokees or Zulukans, Zuluk, Zulokans, in Atalan nation dwelling west of the Mississippi, being driven by the Okhusians, came to Kentucky and Tennessee and settled at last after many wars in the mountains of Carolina where they became a nation of hunting mountaineers and gradually destroyed the Huasioto nation of the Cumberland Mountains. The Shawanese, an Oghusian tribe, came then in contact with the Natchez and expelled them from Kentucky, which they occupied for a long time. The Talagans, north of the Ohio, were partly destroyed or driven south through Kentucky to join the Appalachian or down the Mississippi towards Louisiana and Mexico. Now, within this fifth period to the present time of 1824, the Natchez Confederacy declined gradually, becoming divided into several independent nations such as the Dainsas, Chitimachas, Alabamas, Cusas, Cahuitas, or Cahuitas, Wenginas, etc., spread from Louisiana to Carolina, which, however, did not wage war together, but were often united against the Cherokees, Catabas, and Okhusian nations. When the Totecas of Mexico drove away the Zicalans, the bulk of that nation came to Mississippi and settled on both sides of it, above the Natchez. Many nations have sprung from that stock, all intimately connected in language and manners such as the Chickasaws, Choctaws, Yazoos, or Tapusas, Muscogees, Kopachis, etc. Spreading north and east of the Natchez, they formed a bulkward between them and the northern invaders. The Chickasaws extended their conquests to the banks of the Ohio in Kentucky. The great Otomi nations, extending from the Missouri to Anahuac, divided into numerous tribes such as the Osages or Wahashas, Missouris, Otos, Mazahuas or Omahuas, Capahas or Arkansas, Mandans, etc. The Osages, Missouris, and the Arkansas penetrate as far west Kentucky, the banks of the Wabash, etc. The succession of wars and contentions take place between the numerous nations of na ver nations of various stocks scattered in North America, but which they are weakened and prevented from improving their civilization or uniting against the encroachments of their Europeans. The Spanish, French, and English, after the discovery of America by Columbus, <laughs> settled in North America and in 300 years occupy all the land from Canada to Mexico except a few small spots acquiring possession of it by various means, conquests, sessions, or purchases. Going into chapter of the history of the Okhusians. Now, something like a chronological order can now be introduced, is what he's saying. So, we'll rock with what he's trying to go with, but, you know, the chronology's been so messed up. Um, we're just going to have to try and do some guesswork as we know that so much more has been discovered and taken from North America since 1824 and the research that it took for him to even come with this small book in the first place. But we're going to continue. The records of the Mexicans or Mexicans, the traditions of many Okhusian nations and the an annals of the Europeans, afford sufficient materials for a complete history, but I must be very brief. Now, <laughs> of course you want to be very brief. So the first period, from the invasion of North America by the Oghusians towards the first year of our era, to the defeat of the Dalagans towards 500, including 500 years. Nearly 2,000 years ago. Okay, so we're saying now 2,000 years ago is what y'all giving it to. Y'all wanted to give a, a date, a chronology, huh? All right. I, I'm not with it, but we're just going to ride. Now, great vo revolutions happened and the only reason i want to say that is because we know that here in oregon just recently what they're doing is they're saying that they found a, a rock civilization that dates back to one of the oldest here in america which is about eighteen thousand years so you know you got to watch out with their chronology 
So the uh, nearly 2,000 years ago, the Great Revolutions happened in the north of Asia. Okay, so the Oxian Empire was severed, and a swarm of barbarous nations immigrating from Tartary and Siberia spread desolution from Europe to America. Now, also too, we have to remember if they was talking about the flood of Peleg and that the Telegons was already there during that time period and beforehand. What indications do we have of that occurring here in North America? Was it only 2,000 years ago? No. So, you know, you got to watch out. We're looking at, you know, 10,000 years ago, 11,000 with the Younger Dryas floods where we really had some significant changes to our landscape occur, right? So we'll continue. Um, in Europe, they nearly destroyed the powerful Roman Empire. And they're talking about Tartary. And in North America, they subverted many civilized states, okay? Several of those... Oghusian nations, driven driven by necessity or their foes to the northeast corner of Asia, came in sight of America and crossing the Bering Strait on the ice at various times they reached North America. Two of them, the Lenape and the Mingui, seeking milder climate, spread themselves towards the south, while another, the Karitit, which came after them, spread on the seashores from Alaska to Greenland and some others settled on the northwest coast of Africa. The, Nala the Lenapes, the Lenops, after settling some time on the Oregon and Multnomah rivers, crossed the Oregon mountains and following the Missouri, fighting their way through the Otomis, etc., they reached the Mississippi nearly at the same time with the Minguis, who had come north of the Missouri. You hearing that? The Lenops. Settling for some time on the Oregon and Multnomah rivers, crossed the Oregon mountains and following the Missouri, fighting their way through the Otomis, etc., they reached the Mississippi nearly at the same time with the Munguis, who had come north of the Missouri. Back away with what they're trying to make with the conjecture of they showed up at the same time. Just take the aspect of the names of these people and put it into your research. To further investigate. They found the powerful Talagans in possession of the Illinois. So who they find there? The Talagans in possession of the Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, who opposed their progress and cut off the first party that ventured to cross the Mississippi. Okay, so they say, watch out, man. Y'all coming over here trying to like just thinking y'all just gonna start popping up shop on our land. Like what y'all doing? Y'all taking our resources back up. Like chill out. A long war ensued, in which the two Oghusian nations joined in a confederacy against the Talagans and succeeded after a long struggle to drive them away to the south. Now, in the second period, from the defeat of the Talagans towards 500 to the dispersion of the Lenabs towards 800, including 300 years. Now, when the Lenabs had defeated the Talagans, they had to contend with the Natchez of West Kentucky and the Huasiotos of East Kentucky of the Siotos of Ohio, besides many remaining branches of the Atalans and the Catans, etc., scattered in North America, which they vanquished, destroyed, or drove away, occupying all the country from the Missouri to the Allegheny Mountains, while the Minguis settled north of them on the lakes. Now, the Lenops were hunters, but lived in towns and became partly civilized by the prisoners and slaves that they made. Did you hear that? The Lenops were hunters, but lived in towns and became partly civilized by the prisoners and slaves that they made. Were, the, the slaves and prisoners were civilized. They came in and took over. Now, does this history get spoken of much in relation to the Lenapes? The Lenops? No, it doesn't. Is it wrong to speak about the truth? No. We're breaking it down, man. That's what you got to do. Sometimes you got to get a little uncomfortable out here, you dig? They began to cultivate. They began. This is not as though it was already happening, but they had began to cultivate corn, beans, squashes, tobacco, etc. Their hunters, having ventured across the Allegheny Mountains, discovered a fine country. Now, it says it's not occupied by any nations in Maryland and Pennsylvania, but you got dies a hijack there. Many were induced to remove to that country where they should be more distant from their southern foes. Now, maybe nobody was there because the climate was not inclinated to be able to be suitable at, at the time, so nobody was, maybe. But again, you got to remember, strata on top of strata. 
A settlement was made east of the mountains, and the great Lenapian nation became thus divided into many dis distant tribes, independent of each other, but connected by a similarity of language, religion, manners, and acknowledged origin. The principal of these tribes, which thus became independent nations, were the Chinooks on the Oregon, the Anilcos and Queguas, Queguas on the Missouri, and the Utawas and the Miamis north of the Ohio, the Shawanese or Masawomes in Kentucky, the Mohegans and Abanakis in New England, the Sankikans, Sankikans in New Jersey, the Unamis and the Menesis, Mensis in Peninsula, Mensis in Pennsylvania, the Powhatans Bo in Virginia, the Nanticos in Maryland, the Chippewas and Clestinos on the Upper Mississippi, etc. Now I know I'm leaving y'all on a cliffhanger right here, <laughs> but I have to. I think it's important that we kind of separate these things. And as we separate them, we just get a deeper understanding all the way. We comprehend. Right? You might have to go back and watch this again if you're doing your own research behind me. And a lot of people, you know, promote certain things. They're not getting as deep. Th this is important. You know, they only go back a certain period. We're going back way back. We got to go way back. Because it's documented. They saying it's not. We got proof in the strata. We're going to keep on going. I appreciate y'all of y'all. Love all of y'all. We're going to keep grinding. We're going to keep searching. We're going to keep finding this truth, you dick. All right. Till the next one, y'all. Peace and blessings.